are Locked On Cowboys, your Locked daily Dallas Cowboys on. podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Locked Network, your on. team every day. Locked On. Locked On. Locked On. Locked On. Locked On. Locked On. Locked on Cowboys. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast. I am Marcus Mosier. He is Landon McCool. And today we are going to be talking about coaching candidates for the Cowboys. Uh, maybe. We don't know yet, maybe. Landon. We, we, we have no idea who's going to stay and who's going to go. But before we do that, how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing good. You know, I'm trying to calm myself down. You know, I, honestly, it's like you, uh, I mean, just to kind of peel the curtain back, you know, we have these kind of intense schedules during the season and like, you know, we're constantly watching tape, trying to get ready for the show, like, you know, just prepping and stuff. And now it's like, I'm kind of in this, uh, limbo situation. I'm waiting for, I'm waiting for some, uh, uh, to start watching some prospects that'll probably start this weekend, but this whole week was just kind of, there wasn't a lot to discuss. Yeah. And so it was like having to sit with what happened uh, over the last week. And then that, you know, that hasn't been very much fun. So I'm, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to moving forward, I guess. For you watching on YouTube, I've already started on draft stuff. This is my mm. notes on Devin Lloyd. That's the first guy I started with today. So I'm already, I'm already getting caught up. And I can't, actually can't wait to do that because it's, yeah, that's always it's a good distraction Art- from what just happened. Five days. Uh, yeah, and that's exactly <laughs> what I'm getting at, right? Is that like I'm kind of ha- being forced to sit in this and think about it, and I don't like that. So I'm ready to start having to think about next season. Yeah. Uh, all right. So today we're going to talk about coaching candidates. So yeah. Jerry Jones went on 105.3 The Fan earlier on Friday morning, and he was mad. Now, was he trying to sell the fans that he's just as angry as, yeah. as mad as we are? Maybe. But I think he was also very disappointed that the team did not go further. Does that mean that they're going to make a coaching switch? Probably not. However, he did make one really interesting comment. Like, and he actually mentioned Bill Belichick. Like, hey, if Bill Belichick's available, yeah, that'd be the guy that I'd go out and get, right? Uh, but it's not it's not as simple as that. So uh, before we get into some coaching candidates, any thoughts on just Jerry Jones from this morning? <clears throat> You know, look, I mean, I, I've been uh, watching Jerry Jones do these things for 20, you know, 30 plus years now. Um, and, you know, it's one of those things where it's like you could it, it, it's like it's like we talked about yesterday. Right. However you want to view this is is it, you're going to get you're going to get your narrative yep. out of it. If you think that Jerry is is pissed and going to fire Mike McCarthy. There is absolutely nothing in that press conference that will tell you otherwise. If you think that Mike McCarthy is probably going to stay and this is all just a, a, a show by Jerry to kind of, you know, get the fans on his side that he's angry too, there's nothing in that in that press conference that would make you argue against that. I, I, I you know, I think the big thing with Jerry in general is that, you know, it's it's follow the actions. I mean, this is life, right? Follow yeah. actions speak louder than words. I will say this though. Jerry doesn't necessarily go out of his way to express that level of anger very often like that. I I haven't seen him kind of that generally upset about the way the season ended, like actually seemingly angry upset um, in a while. So is there an opportunity? Is there a chance that this could mean something for the, for the the change in the coaching staff potentially, or at least at the very sense that they're rattling cages. Um, but I, I, you know, again, actions speak louder than words. Let's see what this actually translates. It, it is worth noting, I think, that it seems to be a much more um, aggressive. Well, aggressive is the word, but just a much more volatile voice uh, than what we heard from Steven, You know, and, and previous, it you get the like sense he, that Stephen was maybe the one pushing for McCarthy, potentially. Yeah, like when I they mean, first hired him. Oh, oh! You mean like in the process when they yeah. were hiring? Yeah, I, I, that could be a possibility. I mean, you know, it was Jerry who said that he wanted somebody with you know experience, and I think a, I think he even mentioned a Super Bowl win, you know, as as a, a potential you know uh, can, you know option for candidacy, right? Uh, you know, I don't know. It's it's sometimes it's difficult to kind of parse you know the uh, the, St- the Stephen versus Jerry stuff because yeah. you know, they kind of cross over and they try to unify the message a little bit, but. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, look, 
my whole thought in general always has been it, it was it would be Jerry that would be pushing this train if they're going to be making uh, switches because Jerry's the one who's on the ticking clock. You know, I mean, I hate to be like that about somebody's life, yeah, but uh, you know, I mean, I think that's the, I think he feels it. He's talked about how he's felt it for the last five years. I can't imagine that that feeling has gone down yep. as time has gone on. Yeah, I agree. I think I. I... I think there's some urgency from Jerry Jones here. And I think he's stuck a little bit because I think he knows yeah. as a firing McCarthy and hiring somebody else probably doesn't get us to the Super Bowl faster, but that doesn't mean that McCarthy is the right answer either. Right. So I, I think he's having a hard time figuring out what to do here. I, I would like, here's the problem, right? Is that I think with McCarthy, you have, if you just try to run it back, I think you have less of a chance than you did last year, right? But uh, but but a you know just for speaking generally, right? To, I think if but I think you have a higher chance than like if you just completely started over started over. Like there's a floor there with McCarthy, right? Because you're, you're at least you're coming back, the system's in place, you're not having to real do all that stuff, yep. right? The risk it option is hey, let's take let's take an option on a non- different coach. See if we can extend the window again. Maybe next year isn't part of our window, but we get two or three bites at the apple after that season, yeah. which we may, you know, may not get with McCarthy, depending on how things play out. So it's it's not, you know, I, I don't I don't envy him because you know if he's trying to win it soon, it's t- probably a tough decision as to whether which one will get you there faster. Eh, I envy him a little bit. Flying around in a jet well, would be pretty cool. I'll throw your own I don't. Out. I don't envy him <laughs> with this decision. Let's put it that way. How about that? Uh, yeah, I, I'm going back to that quote. He said he doesn't see many options better out there than Mike McCarthy. He said if Bill Belichick was available, sure. Other than that, not much. But it doesn't mean that he's not happy or that he's happy with the job that's been done. So I don't know, Landon. Uh, but let's talk. Let's talk some candidates. Let's say the Cowboys do, do fire. Mike McCarthy. And let's say they do it on a Friday news dump while I'm sitting at dinner with my wife. Uh, who would be some possible options uh, for the Cowboys? Uh, we'll do that after this break because I want to tell you guys about Get Upside. Our listeners are making up to 25 cents for every single gallon of gas every time they fill up. Just download the free Get Upside app in the App Store or Google Play right now and use promo code TOUCHDOWN and get a bonus 25 cents per gallon on your first fill up. That's up to 50 cents cash back. Don't pay full price at the pump anymore. Get cash back using GetUpside. You can cash out anytime to your bank account, PayPal, or e-gift card. Just download the free GetUpside app in the App Store and use promo code TOUCHDOWN to get up to 50 cents per gallon cash back on your first tank. That is promo code TOUCHDOWN. We also wanted to tell you guys about Bet Online. Bet Online would like to wish you a happy new betting year as we continue our march to the playoffs and beyond. BetOnline remains the number one spot for all the best sports wagering action for 2022. It's a new year and a new update, updated desktop and mobile website. To sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit, just use promo code LOCKDOWN to get started. From football, basketball, hockey, boxing, and UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2022 season. BetOnline, where the game starts. All right, Landon. If the Cowboys do fire McCarthy, who was the first guy you would want them to interview? Probably Brian Dable, I think. You know, I mean, my thought process is that if you lo- look at what the Bills offense does with the with with their personnel and the way that uh, Allen plays for them, I just feel like it's a very clean, you know, transition to what Dak and and, and what the Cowboys want to do. I just feel like, you know, you look <clears throat> The Bills went through a lot of what the, of what Dallas went through this season, right? Where they they started out incredibly hot, they kind of ran into a wall a little bit, but they were able to work through that and then actually get to the other side, make adjustments. And, and, and honestly, it, it's almost the exact same thing, right? Where they started seeing more shell coverage, they started mm-hmm. taking away the big play, but the Bills were able to kind of find a way around and through that and still continue to make plays and 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 then get back on the horse and kind of reinvigorate their offense the way that we had hoped the the Cowboys would and it never panned out that way so to me he's a guy who has been underneath an an incredible head coach and what Sean McDermott has done in the the Bills has been just absolutely incredible Uh, but I mean again 
you get that 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 experience underneath a good head coach. You understand a good system. You have experience fixing an offense uh, and with a quarterback who I think has a kind of similar skill set to Dak. I mean, obviously, mm-hmm. Allen is a freak of nature and I'm not trying to compare his physical tools to Dak's necessarily. But I think as far as the playing style goes, they're very similar. I just feel like it would be a, a good transition. He's a name that would potentially pull some uh, uh, some other good candidates to potentially you know get on the defensive side. I think the Cowboys don't really need to worry about a defensive coordinator if they get a uh, uh, an OC transitioning into a head coach situation because I think the Cowboys are going to have tons of great options for a defensive coordinator. We can talk about that in a second, but I, I for me, I understand it's a little bit of a risk. It he doesn't have a ton of experience. But Brian Dable is a guy that I would take a risk on simply because his resume is very impressive. I mean, <laughs> I'm looking at some stuff right now. He, this is the, the coaches he's worked under over the last yeah, few years. Are you ready? Uh, Sean McDermott in Buffalo since 2018, been the offensive coordinator. McDermott, widely viewed as one of the best coaches in the league right now. Uh, 2017, he was the offensive coordinator for Alabama. So Nick yep. Saban. 2013 to 2016, he was the tight ends coach in New England. So Bill yep. Belichick. Uh, okay. Then he worked with Andy Reid uh, with the Chiefs. Uh, not bad at all. And then back to New England, I mean, in 2002 to 2006, he was defensive assistant over there. Like, this guy's worked with some pretty doggone good, you know, successful coaches. I think uh, I think he's the first guy I would interview because I do think he could take this offense to the next level. Absolutely. And I think, you know, that kind of wide and varied experience, lots of success, uh, you know, that's the kind of thing you want in a uh, a new head coach, right? If you're going to get a guy who's never been a head coach before, you want somebody who's had a lot of breadth and depth of, of, of experience. And he's he has that, like you mentioned, I mean, four of the best, very best head coaches in uh, in yep. college and NFL. Uh, and I think that, you know, that experience is really hopefully kind of rubbed off on him. And there's a reason he's getting a ton of interviews is because he should be the top candidate for someone who hasn't been a head coach yet. All right, what about Jim Harbaugh? There's been some whispers, some rumblings that he would like to return to the NFL. Super, super uh, you know, productive as an NFL coach when he was with the 49ers. Took that team to the NFC Championship, I think, what, three straight years. Um, what do you think about Harbaugh in Dallas? I don't hate it. I mean, I, I like Harbaugh because I think Harbaugh will draw uh, names to him, right? Like he'll, he'll get good assistants to come yeah. play co- co- uh, coach for him. Like, I think he's one of, do you know who guys. his defensive coordinator would be? Would it be Don Brown? No, would he bring no, back no. Don Brown? it'd be the who? same defensive coordinator that he had in 40 with the 49ers. I'm sure of it. It'd be oh, Vic you think, Fangio. That, you think Vic Fangio come back? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that makes sense. I mean, Vic Fangio is someone who should be, in the consideration for Dallas defense coordinator regardless. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, that makes, I mean, obviously they've worked together before uh, again, you know, kind of has some experience there. The question is who would be the offensive coordinator, you know, but I, I think that you don't really necessarily have to worry about that because I do think that Harbaugh will draw a quality offensive coordinator from somewhere. So I think Harbaugh is a good option, at least someone to consider. Anybody else that you would be interesting in interviewing? <sighs> yeah. I mean, this is going to sound like blasphemy, but is Doug Peterson ready to come back into coaching? I, yes. I you know, I think yeah. the thing, the, the thing about Peterson for me is that, you know, he, he got, he got buoyed a lot by Frank Reich. I think Frank Reich is an incredible coach. I mean, I think he's proven that after going to the Colts and, and showing the success there. But I also think that Peterson himself was a very, very good coach. Lots of experience, uh, obviously a Super Bowl winning head coach. Um, a guy who uh, I think kind of uh, dealt with some power struggles with the uh, Eagles uh, front office. And uh, I don't know that that necessarily uh, plays poorly. I don't, after looking and deciphering that whole situation, to me, the Eagles front office is the one that came out looking poorly, not, yeah. not Peterson. Peterson was standing up for his coaches, was probably pretty sick of the of the demands that, that they play Carson Wentz. Mm-hmm. And then after he got let go, they ended up letting, letting Carson Wentz go too. So uh, I, I think Peterson is a guy who has a resume that's worth uh, interviewing. I know obviously being a former Eagles head coach doesn't you know put him high on a lot of Cowboys fans list, but right. I think he's somebody that's worth considering for sure. What about Josh McDaniels over in New England? He's only 45. Is that somebody that's interesting to you at all? It's just those last two stops are just, you know, they're they're not great. And I, I, you know, I, I think 
I don't, I don't know. I mean, that's a that's a third. Yeah. T- isn't this his third time to be a head coach? Is this like a retread? I I, I just I agree. He's done. Some it would be, it would be a second way. He was what the Broncos head coach for two years. Maybe I'm thinking. I, I always get him and Lane Kiffin's careers. Good, no, no, I no, always no, I view them Broncos very similarly. He's basically been in New England since the early 2000s. Yeah, and then was the you know head coach at Denver for how many how long was he in Denver for like two years three or four years yeah so two years maybe I I just I don't know I mean the the way things went down in Denver wasn't great and uh, and maybe he's learned his lesson but there is also like a long history of coaches that come out of that tree yeah. uh, that that don't don't pan out you know so uh, he's on I, I guess he would be on the list but he's lower on the list for me at least. Um. I got somebody for you. No, man. <laughs> There's a face right there. How about Mike McDaniel right here uh, for the 49ers? <laughs> you know, the funny thing is he looks exactly like one of my very good friends, Kevin Mayer. So, like, as soon as they, <laughs> as soon as this started popping up, I started sending this to my buddy. Like, when did you become the coach of the offensive Listen, coordinator for the 49ers? Why not? Why not? He, you know, look, if, if Kellen Moore is getting, you know, rec- you know, op- opportunities, how old is McDaniel? Do you know? 38. Oh, so he's actually older than Kellen. I know. Um, he looks like he's like 27. He looks like he's like 10 years younger than Kellen, and Kellen <laughs> looks really young. Uh, look, I mean, he's been with uh, Shanahan for a very long time, from what I remember. I mean, even since, yeah. like, maybe even since Washington, maybe? I mean, I mean, like, yeah. or uh, like yeah, yeah. right no, after he, he's, he's followed them everywhere. 2017 to 2020, he was the, the run game coordinator. This year, got promoted to offensive coordinator. He was in Atlanta with Kyle Shanahan. He was in Cleveland with Kyle Shanahan. He was with Washington in Kyle, with Kyle Shanahan. So he's followed him basically everywhere. I, I, you know, absolutely. Do I think the Cowboys would would interview him? No, absolutely not. I don't think they. <laughs> well, you don't think he's a you don't think he's a Dallas type of head coach? I mean, that's the problem, right? <laughs> Is that we have to like we have to view it through that, like, oh, people won't ex- like we 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 have that's to filter it through. Well, people will people accept him as a good coach? I don't well, care. As opposed to. Hey, this guy is a good coach. Like he's been doing a lot of really good things in the NFL since he's been here. Yeah, I I mean, unfortunately, I just don't know that I think there honestly God is an image issue there, which is unfortunate because he's a, a, clearly a fantastic coach. He also embraces running backs don't matter, which I absolutely love. There he just is going to throw Elijah Mitchell, we, seventh round pick back there. That's why that candidate got the option of getting their picture put up yes, on, the, uh, on the on the Locked On Cowboys uh, podcast. Somebody please hire Mike McDaniel away from the 49ers, <laughs> please. He's really, really good. Uh, all right. One more quick break to tell you guys about Built Bar. Uh, it's the new year, so that means New Year's resolutions. We hope that you didn't give up on yours already. But if yours is about getting fit or getting healthier – Make sure you include Built Bar in your plan. Built Bars are covered in 100% real chocolate, and most Built Bars only contain 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. They have so many great flavors. It's going to be hard for you to pick which one you want. Mm -hmm. Coconut almond, peanut butter brownie, (laughs) raspberry, cookies and cream, salted caramel, mint brownie, Mm -hmm. and so many more. Uh, In fact, they're always coming up with with new ideas. So if you ever have an idea, shoot them one. They're they're very responsive. Uh, Go to built.com and use promo code LOCK15 and you'll get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. All right, Landon. More than likely, the Cowboys are going to keep Mike McCarthy. We'll see about Kellen Moore. But it does seem pretty likely that Dan Quinn's going to be gone. I think Every team has interviewed him that's going to have a uh, – or is going to interview him that has a head coach vacancy. Should he leave, who do you want to be the defensive coordinator here in Dallas? Oh, man, there's so many great options. I mean, that's the one thing I'm just not worried about, you know, because, yeah. I mean, Mike Zimmer is the name that is being kind of bantied about uh, around here. Um, you know, just to kind of throw the names out first and we can talk about them, you know, I think Mike Zimmer is obviously a, a, a clear choice Uh you know, uh, Fangio, as we mentioned, obviously a guy that I think the Cowboys 100% should be considering. Uh, I think Patrick Graham, if I, I, I don't think he's actually been let go technically yet, or but but I'm assuming if they're if they're hiring head coaches, that likely he may be gone. I would be interested in him if, like, specifically if like Brian Flores gets hired in New York, yeah. I would say, <clears throat> give me, I could take a Patrick Graham, I'm on board with that. Um, you know, I, I think, mean, I don't know what, what's gonna happen in what's gonna happen in Arizona. 
you know, it, it, like, are they about to fire uh, 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 their head coach? Would that, would that, you know, would Joseph be part of uh, that that house cleaning? That it, it's what's interesting to see is like what the total list of of uh, of coordinators that could be come available is because I, I still feel like the the sands are kind of shifting underneath some of these coaches' feet, which means that some of these uh, defensive coordinators may become available kind of late in the game. Yeah, we should talk. Well, let's let's talk about another one. Um, Gus Bradley, because we don't yeah. know what's going on with the, the Raiders yet, right? Is Rich Passaccia yeah. going to come back? Is are they going to hire Har- Harbaugh? Is is Gus Bradley a name that would interest you? Because obviously he comes from that same Seattle coaching tree. Is Bradley somebody that could come in and kind of do a you know a Dan Quinn impersonation? I don't want somebody coming in to do a Dan Quinn impersonation. You know, like I, I, Dan Quinn was there though. Gus, that's who Gus Bradley has as his defensive line coach. I mean, just keep him out of the draft room. I guess it's fine. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I loved I love Marinelli, but again, like yeah, that I do feel that way. Keep him out of the draft room. I, I'm not opposed to the that. I mean. I mean, but if you're going to talk about that, then what about Rich Bisacci as a potential head coach candidate? <laughs> like, I mean, maybe not for the Cowboys, but he needs to be considered. I thought he did a yeah. fantastic job with, with the rest of the Raiders season, and I think he's a fantastic coach. But Bradley, you know, it's an acceptable, but it's it, it just if we come back with Mike McCarthy and Gus Bradley, Mike McCarthy and Gus Bradley as our defensive coordinator after what we did last year, I mean, it's just going to be like. Okay. It's just like uh, it's it's like trying to run it back, like except on at 75% and 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 hoping that you're gonna get better results. It doesn't seem likely at all. I, I think Gus Bradley is a good defensive coordinator. I, I mean, I've watched them all year with the Raiders. They run cover three on basically every snap. That's one of the things that Dan Quinn changed, right? They yeah. Cowboys were like one of the lowest teams in the league in cover three this year, right? Like he did a good job of mixing up coverages and stuff. I, I just don't know if Bradley is even close to being good enough for what this team wants to do. No, you know, I, I feel like it's a pretty clear downgrade. Now, Mike Zimmer, on the other hand, I'm not sure that it's a downgrade. I'm not sure that it's an upgrade, but it might just be a lateral move because I think Mike Zimmer is really, really good. I think a lot of his problems were the offense, right? Like the offense was a little too inconsistent. They were tied to Kirk Cousins, and you know, maybe he's not good enough to to win consistently in the playoffs but if zimmer is your defensive coordinator i I can i can live with that i think that would be great yeah i mean i think the zimmer would be coming into a situation similar to what quinn came into last year except this is a guy who has been consistently producing one of the top defenses in the league for a decade which is almost impossible i mean defense is extremely volatile it's very difficult to to kind of replicate year to year and, and, you know, Marcus and I were talking about this before the show. There's a conception out there, and, and I, I'm sorry, a perception out there that, and, and I, I understand it because of some of the other things. There's a perception out there that he's just this old school guy. He's outdated, da 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 His methodology for being a head coach may be, um, you know, the way he interacts with people may be old school. But as far as the X's and O's go, like in, in, in the, you know, defensive scheming goes, He's still one of the best in, in football. I mean, you just have to go ask Aaron Rodgers yeah. how he feels about him yeah. or any of these folks. Like, he is very good at the scheme side of defensive coordinator. And these are the best types of guys to get from for defensive coordinators. These guys who clearly have enough talent to have been hired as a head coach because of their defenses and mm-hmm. have put out good defenses that, than there, but that just weren't good enough as head coaches. But they are probably still pretty great at being a defense coordinator. So uh, I, I know some people would – you kind of poo-poo Zimmer simply, simply because he is an old school guy, but don't – I wouldn't just view it strictly as, oh, he's an old ball coach who doesn't know modern defense. He understands that stuff as well as anybody, and I think in that kind of role, that's where Zimmer would really, really thrive. So, all right, so starting in 2016, this is where the defense ranked – excuse me, back in 2015 in points per game. Fifth, sixth, first, ninth, fifth, and then 2020 and 2021, he had a big drop-off, 29th and 24th. Is it just at that point, like, was talent just kind of falling off? And I think you can make an argument, yes, right? Like, Daniel Hunter has missed really the last two seasons. Yeah. Uh, th- th- they just didn't do a good job of drafting. But if he only has to focus on that side of the ball and you give him the talent that the Cowboys have, I think he could be really good. And I think the thing is here, too, is I, I, I think 
the Cowboys talent matches up pretty well with what Zimmer yeah. wants to do, right? Like let's say they bring back Demarcus Lawrence and Randy Gregory and they have Micah Parsons. I think Zimmer would know how to use those type of players, yes. right? I mean, Zimmer is the guy who basically, I mean, he didn't invent it, but has, has perfected the double a gap blitz. I mean, yes. like he is the, like he is the guy to go talk to about that. And, and, you know, that's some of the things that were where the Cowboys were at their most deadly, right? Is you get your pass rushes on the outside and then you get two blitzers inside who can do that. And I don't care who the other blitzer is, as long as Mike yeah. is one of them. We could be the other blitzer. We'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll do the blitzing. I'll, I'll be the peg. Uh, yeah, I, I think that that shows you kind of like yeah. a, a match that's, that makes a lot of sense there. And again, kind of going back to what you said, I mean, the, the Vikings couldn't draft a corner to save their life for the last five or six years. And that's really been the problem. They had to bring in Patrick Peterson, who honestly, I I think he might somehow be older than I am now. Uh, And, and so it's, it's, it's just one of those things where the Cowboys personnel wise are in a much better situation than the Vikings were this year, you know, because they, they have an aging defense. Those linebackers are not getting any younger hunters keeps getting injured. Everson Griffin's long gone. I mean, he's back, but he's not the same. And then they don't really have any kind of replacements. They never really kind of got the, the, the defensive interior fully back to the strength that it had been at different points. So uh, yeah, I I think that Zimmer would really thrive in in with, with our personnel on this defense. Uh, I'm going to read you all the first round corners they've taken over the last couple of years. Cause it's really funny. Jeff Gladney already out of the NFL. Uh, Mike Hughes, he 2018, he's with the Chiefs now after he got cut. Uh, Mackenzie Alexander, Trey Waynes, uh, t- Xavier Rhodes was good for a while. They like to draft corners. Now, they didn't always have success, but I can guarantee you that, that Zimmer would walk in here and he'd like the cornerback situation, right? Having Diggs, Joseph, Brown, Lewis, Nation, right? Like I, yeah, I, think right would, the- I think he would think the coverage pretty full here in Dallas. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, again, especially compared to what what he's coming from, yeah. uh, you know, all his great players on his defense had been drafted five plus years ago, so uh, they they've really had a hard time kind of replenishing that defense. But again, it speaks volumes that he continued to be able to drag these folks out and have top ten defenses almost every single year. Yeah. In most Remember, cases, top they five. They beat the Packers this year, like because of their defense. Really. Um, now the biggest question is. How is he going to get along with some of the players, right? Because he That's... seems like he's very old school. Um, and it's very opposite, maybe, of the way Dan Quinn uh, came to dealing with players and stuff. But he's a really good coach regardless. Like I think he would figure it out. You'd hope so. I mean, that is a very legitimate concern because he is – I mean, crusty is the nicest way to put it. He is a jerk, basically. I mean, from all all reports, I mean, every report about any kind of thing anywhere, he's a jerk. Uh, but he's very good, very smart. Um, you know, I think there's there's some people on this team that are not afraid of tough coaching. The question yeah. is, you know, they're also used to being treated kind of like family. I don't know if that's how Zimmer treats his players, but it's so, maybe the kind of coaching Dallas needs a little bit. Maybe you know, I mean, that's a, that's a legitimate point. Is that you know there is a, a, an idea that maybe this this group has been too coddled and having somebody that can go in there and kick their butts, maybe that's two them out. Yep. Uh, I, if the Cowboys happen to hire Mike Zimmer, which Again, we are a long ways from that. Oh, yeah. We'll make sure to bring on Luke Braun from Lockdown Vikings to talk yeah. about it. But I spoke to him yesterday briefly. and He said one of the things that veteran players really admire about Mike Zimmer is it's a team-based defense where if you do your job, the defense is going to work. So I, that's why a lot of veterans can come into that defense and have success. Like, I, I mean, I thought Patrick Peterson was completely washed last year yeah. and two years <laughs> ago. Goes to Minnesota and looks really good in that defense, right? Like I, 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 I should, I yeah. should say that my criticism earlier was like, yeah, I mean he's old, but it's unbelievable what he was able to do in Zimmer's right. defense. Right. Yes, and he got Eric Kendricks to play really well. I thought Anthony Barr was done a couple years ago. He played well this season. Like he would, I think he would be a really, really good hire. We'll see what the Cowboys decide to do, or if Dean Quinn even leaves. Maybe there's a chance he he stays. We'll maybe I doubt it, but we'll see. Uh, all right that is it for today's show thank you guys for tuning in we'll be back on monday to maybe talk a little bit about some of the biggest takeaways from the divisional round of the playoffs mike mccarthy being fired who knows Landon? we've got the <laughs> next couple of weeks to just uh talk about whatever news comes out so that should be a lot of fun 
Uh, download the show wherever you get your podcast: Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Uh, you can follow the show on Twitter at Locked On Cowboys. Landon is at McCoolBCB. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosier. We'll see you guys next time.